Hey everybody, so imagine if I could tell you that you can discover 1000 drug molecules in next one year time. Imagine if I could tell you that you could create a device through which you will be able to interact with computers without even lifting your fingers. Well, these are things of science fiction and cutting edge research as well. And a lot of research is going in this field and that's where we call it as computational biology. A field where we merge two different domains, the speed of computers and the expertise of biology. So in today's video, we're going to talk about computational biology. Now here's a thing you should know about computational biology. It's an amazing field, but requires passionate people. If you are passionate about computers and if you're passionate about biology, this is where you are at the right position to pursue a career in computational biology. In today's video, I'm going to talk everything in detail, everything in ultra descriptive way, and probably this video will become a bigger video, but I want to make sure that the key takeaway here is you know everything about this field, so that next time when you jump in, you know where you are sailing. So let's get started with today's video. Didn't start. Are you? Start. So today we are talking about computational biology as you can see at my back. We'll start with the first part which is importance and scope. Okay, let's look at how important this field is. Well, we know how the IT revolution happened in India and in the global arena, but how it can help us in the biosciences industry? Well, with the advent of technology, we have more and more genomics data which is being available today. So analysis of that banta hai. so that's one thing genomics data analysis is one area which is uh, very scopic and growing the population is exploding and that means newer avenues of application of computers in biology is coming up there is a huge demand for faster drug discovery process because the microbes are getting smarter and outsmart outsmarting humans so we have to take help of computers to you know develop better drugs, faster drugs with much more efficacy. Next, human machine interface. You must have heard of Elon Musk and the brain machine interface which they're developing. Tomorrow, what if I tell you that this is going to be the new normal? So for that, more and more computational biologists, neurologists are required. And the last one, pandemics and epidemics everywhere. Everywhere you're seeing pandemics, epidemics happening, and that demands for more application of computers in biology. In fact, the Moderna RNA vaccine was designed inside a computer and not in a lab. So isn't that amazing? These, these are the pointers which definitely highlight how important and scopic this field is gonna be in the future. So what are the educational requirements you need to get into this field? Well, it's very basic. You should have, a 10 plus 2 with physics, chemistry, maths, biology or physics, chemistry, maths, computers. You should have a bachelor's in life sciences and while you're doing masters in life sciences, you can take up specialization and what are those specialization? Any of these you can take. You can take a specialization in chemical engineering, computer science, applied statistics, biostatistics, epidemiology, computational biology and bioinformatics. Any of these you can choose as per your interest and that will further help you excel in this field. The next one, you should have a fluent and very good understanding of scientific terminologies, biological terminologies, biochemistry, molecular biology, genetics, all this you should be thorough with. So these are the educational requirement, but hey, is this enough? No. You see, this is an upcoming field. That means things change overnight. New softwares are coming, new ways of doing things are coming. And that means you need a lot of skill set. So I'm going to classify the skill sets now and show you. And probably during your bachelor's itself, from bachelor's or master's, whenever you are and wherever you are, you can start building on the top of your skill set. So let's get started with the skills required. So I'll divide it into two parts, technical skills and soft skills. 
okay so the technical skills which you require is programming so under programming you have you have a lot of uh, you know uh, languages like perl matlab r language java c c++ python all this you should know next is bioinformatic tools like cluster law blat blast t coffee sequence bioedit these are the bioinformatic tools you should know and hey don't get scared these you have to study over a period of like 10 years right so it's not that you are going to do it overnight next database skills like swiss prot mysql srs database ucm sc genome browser ncbi uniprot interface so these are the database skills you should have then subdomain software is like oechem swiss swiss doc oracle autodoc Pro, uh, protmax argus you you see these softwares are required because you are going to study the behavior of biological molecules at the physics level at the atomic level so you know these softwares will be very handy data mining and visualization molecular biology genetics biochemistry so these are the technical skills you require over a period of next 5 to 7 years you need to develop develop this and that's where you can get into this field now what are the soft skills required very simple you have to be flexible you have to have a lot of patience because obviously research requires a lot of patience communication you need to be very clear with what you want to communicate with your seniors superiors peers and juniors and teamwork because nobody in this world can move one step forward without teamwork okay so teamwork is a must so these are the soft skills of course there are a lot, a lot of soft skills out there so now quickly coming to the job prospects here is something i wanted to highlight see there are jobs in the government there is jobs in the academics and there are jobs in the industry but you need to choose depending on what kind of life you want okay not the money side because money eventually will flow and get spent what kind of life you want you want a stable you know calm life you want get into academics you want something like dynamic too much of work okay workaholic you are passionate about the field go for the you know industry and if you are someone who just wants to, you know a stable government job of course go for the government jobs so that's where let's jump in now to the job prospects so the job prospects i am dividing into two categories okay uh, government and industry so here this is for um, india okay so this is for india so under government you have a um, lot of research happening under csir in medicine epidemiology genomics and um, these under the csir labs these are happening and in academy also you can get, you once you have csir net qualified you can get into as computational biology professor assistant professor all that is there now coming to the industry in india you have companies which are developing biological softwares you can get in there as a software engineer or you can jump into drug interaction modeling and uh, doing using the softwares which i just showed you now what are the companies in india working on this so you have biocon serum institute lupin uh, coca cola scrodinger is also there reliance life sciences tata so all these companies are working in this domain now coming to abroad so let's look at okay there also we can divide into government and industry so under government you have nih national institute of health in us and they have phd and postdocs doing research so you can get in there and do your phd or postdoc and of course multiple other positions are available in us for this okay and like i have always says said my uh, us is the mecca of uh biosciences so that's where you can get in now teaching jobs also they, uh, you have teaching jobs professor assistant professor jobs there in us and uh, abroad so now coming to the industry there so you have uh, companies like moderna pfizer novartis various cro's and small startups working in this domain in us uk europe china so you can all, always get in there now very interesting thing here is i'm going to now divide it into sectors like okay i told you about india and abroad now what are the sectors you can get in so you know medical device biomedical devices research and testing agricultural chemicals uh, pharmaceuticals big pharma and various funded labs of csir and national institute of health that is nih in us so these are the places where you can get in easily with a computational biology but what kind of job titles you will get okay 
here it is so once you get in there you will get a job title like a software and instrumentation test engineer you may get a job with a title called research scientist or a bioinformatics scientist or a senior research associate depending on you know principal scientist all such things will be there depending on uh, the company and the ladder but yeah these are the job titles you can expect but this is not a complete list this is just a reference list which i'm giving you now the very important thing which you all should know is a path to success. We all want success, right? We all want to know which way I should go so that I can succeed. So you see, computational biology is a growing field. It's an upcoming field and a lot of things are changing every day. Okay, so you can't just say that, okay, I have read this book and I'm done here. Okay, you need to keep upskilling yourself, okay, which is a lifelong process. And you have to uh, know this that you know sky is the limit here because computers are, are evolving and at the same time biological research is also evolving okay so the path is very clear here if you are just a bachelor's or a master's you cannot go to a very high level but if you are a phd definitely you can quickly this is what i have written written over here start early win big so if whether you are in bachelor's or master's wherever you're standing start you know learning these skill sets which is going to help you okay so start early win big the next is do phd in computational biology or uh, bioinformatics because that will help you here completely okay without a doubt so this, this is a clear path to success at early age start learning the softwares and by the time you have cleared your csinet or you have enrolled into phd you will be all thorough with all those tools and now you have to just apply and implement and probably you can be at this you know forefront of cutting edge technology called computational biology. But what if I tell you that we need to know the larger picture first, you know, when I was in my bachelor's, the first day of the class, I turned back and I asked my classmate, hey, what I'm going to do with this course, right? Because that's something which is very important. If you don't know the larger picture, we cannot have the confidence to go into that field, right? So now let's know the larger picture. So the larger picture is, Quantum computing is coming. In the next 10 years, you will see quantum computing everywhere. Quantum biology will be the next leap of computational biology. And that is where, uh, like you can see, CPUs of today are much faster than the CPUs of 1990. The same way the CPUs of the quantum computing CPUs of 2030 will be much faster than, like 100,000 times faster than what we have today. So that is where the drug discovery process, the molecular modeling process, uh, the molecular inter inter modeling and interaction process, all this will get accelerated. So that's where you can take advantage of this ever-growing field. The next one is the demand is is going to shoot up as more and more data is getting available in epidemiology, drug discovery, genomics, all that is going to help you. And then there is always a need for faster drug discovery because the population is exploding, the barrier between animals and humans is shrinking and that is where the uh, you know zoonotic diseases are jumping into the humans. So that's where uh, we need faster drug discovery process, right? So this is this is the larger picture we have. So more or less, I have uh, given you a very thorough and clear picture, very informative uh, picture here in through with the help of this flowchart. But yeah, see, I can show you the direction you have to go that way. And whenever you go that way, you will have questions. So all you have to do is put those questions down in the comment section. I'll try my best to answer all of you as fast as possible. But in the meantime, remember this, computational biology is growing, uh, field is going to grow 1000 times from today or 10,000 times from today. But it is just like if I had told you to invest in Infosys in 1990, when it started and you would be, you'd be like, no, I don't think this company is ever going to grow. And today you can see Infosys is a, you know, uh, $100 billion company. So what I'm trying to mean to say, I mean to say here is, when you start early, invest in the right field, you are going to enjoy the speed. You're sitting on the shoulder of computers and evolving biology, you grow faster compared to anyone else. And it doesn't harm, you know, the skill sets which I just showed you here, like you know, the technical skills, it won't harm you. Whether you are in any research, these things will come handy, okay? And the best part, when you start early, your understanding develops and once you have the understanding it is better to evolve you know do research because you would already know things which people are still studying okay so i personally feel if i was you 
I would have jumped into this field. This is an amazing field. So this is all about today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around in the next video. Till then, please take care and bye-bye.